And on to the KSN 770. Yeah, yeah. This is our um, our center stack unit uh, for the general aviation market. It's a, it's actually a three in one unit. So what we're doing is, if you've seen the old Bendix King stack where there's a lot of equipment such as radios, navigators, uh, uh, transponder, autopilot. It, there's a whole stack of instruments. Uh, this unit here is designed to take the place of three of those. So this is really, it's a multifunction display shown here. It's also a NAVCOM, a full NAVCOM primary radio here. So you can get rid of the NAVCOM, get rid of the MFT. And it's, an also, it's also a WAS uh, GPS navigator, full, full navigator with all the moving maps and the database associated with a, an FMS navigator. So it's designed, again, for three-in-one. This is also a high-resolution display. We've uh, increased the resolution from our older displays from a, a quarter VGA glass to full VGA. So you notice it's a much brighter and, and crisper display. Uh, we can do some more with the fonts. We can make the fonts a little smaller. We can actually create extra windows on the display for more information. And, keep and that's all user customizable? Yeah, well, there's menus here that allow you to, to show, you know, either take window on, take the window out, um, and things like that uh, through button pushes. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Let's see, as you move through this, the functionality uh, is pretty intuitive also. There's a lot more functionality in this unit, though, than the, than the KFD. And it starts up here with the, um, your overlays. So in other words, you can, you can overlay all the hazard information like a multifunction display can do today. So you can start with um, traffic. So this will do a full, this is full TAS, TCAS1, TCAS2 traffic interface. So we're showing here the traffic uh, on, the, on this display. Full TAWS, terrain uh, awareness uh, warning system. So you can overlay uh, the terrain map there. Uh, lightning, so it's a storm scope showing your lightning in the area. Uh, uh, this is another nice feature that sets us apart, we feel, from the competition, is this unit, again, is a full multifunction display allowing weather radar, an airborne weather radar. So not only can you do the data link weather, which is XM generated weather, but we can also put a card in here to do the weather radar. So if you have a, weather, a digital weather radar, we can interface with that. Now the nice thing about this display, and I, I won't show it here, is you can overlay all these hazards together. And that's done here through this overlay key. But we also understand that it starts getting a bit crowded when you start putting all this information onto one little screen. So we created this thumbnail, if you will, here, this key right here. And it allows you to start moving some of the stuff from here over to here. So I'm showing, I'm showing TAWS here. So the pilot can maybe keep his map display up here, but maybe monitor the terrain over here or monitor the XM weather picture over here. And you can just cycle through that by doing this. So there's your weather, weather radar. That would be your, your uplink data, uh, XM weather, uh, your TCAS or uh, as we showed TAWS. So that's kind of nice. And if you don't like that thumbnail, you can just get out of it by making it go away and just keep all your information here, get a little bit bigger display. Okay. So that's kind of nice, some of the, some of the multifunction display capability here. Um, moving on, this is, a, as I said, it's a full NAVCOM radio. It can be your primary NAVCOM, and it, this information is always displayed right here, your, your COM radio and your NAV radio. You can minimize that if you want to make it a little smaller, but you'll always have your radio information right here in the lower left. But to address that, you can, you know, you cycle, um, you can adjust your frequency in the standby and then use the, the button here to toggle into primary. So it's pretty intuitive on how to use the radio. So that's your other function. And lastly, this is, as I said, it's a, it's a full navigator, uh, GPS WAS navigator. So we can do things graphically with this unit that make it a little more intuitive. We've got this cursor control device here that actually you can move, a, move your cursor around. And with that, we've added drop-down menus, very much like a Windows environment. Again, trying to make it more intuitive for the pilot, uh, rather than having to memorize a bunch of button pushes to get to where you need to go. Aero TV is brought to you by... Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. 
the Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Okay, so what I've got is um, the ability to do graphical flight planning. And we've got a sample flight plan built here. Again, just a four waypoint flight plan around Oshkosh, Appleton, and Green Bay. And what I've got here is I've pushed the flight plan key and I've got this, the flight plan displayed here. Now, once that flight plan is displayed, I can use the cursor control device to, to manipulate the flight plan graphically. So if I wanted to, say, do something at um, Appleton, I'll highlight Appleton there and select it. And you get this, uh, this task menu here around Appleton. And it's giving me some options, uh, if you can pick that up with the camera. I can either go direct to, I can cross Appleton, I can intersect it, or um, do a number of things here. Now, let me see if I can do something at um, Green Bay here. So now we're inbound to Green Bay. Green Bay is our, our, uh, our waypoint we're, we're flying towards right now. And I selected Green Bay, and I've got this task menu now of things I can do around Green Bay. So again, I can, we're going direct to Green Bay now. I can also set up a holding pattern, for example. So you can, one of the options is to set up a hold at Green Bay. So if um, there's not a published hold in the database and they ask you to hold at Green Bay, you can just use this little drop-down menu to set up a holding uh, uh, racetrack. So it gives you some options, uh, inbound, outbound course, if you want to do right turns or left turns and holding, things like that. So there's some limited functionality on this demonstration, but that gives you a flavor for how to graphically manipulate a flight plan. So That's some very nicely intuitive menuing on there, though. Yeah, it, it should be. And as we get more functionality of the real units after the demonstration unit here, it'll, it'll show you more capability in how to actually load a flight plan or create a flight plan or manipulate the flight plan a little more in more detail. But um, yeah, it's getting a lot of attention. I think the pilots that we've shown the graphical interface to really like that um, added bit of uh, intuitiveness as well as reducing the number of button pushes and, and cycling knobs to get waypoints to come up uh, is, is in the older units that we have where you have to dial it all in by manually turning knobs.